Hi, this is Pete Gass of the Mean Street Posse and author of my new book, Looking at the Lights. You're watching Wrestling with Regret. Hello everyone, it's time for the start of week four of Wrestling with Regrets Animation Month. <music> 2007, what a year. The iPhone debuted, Prince killed it at the Super Bowl halftime show, Drew Carey took over as the host of Price is Right, TNA was doing some of its best work, WWE not so much, and Sony Pictures Animation came out with its second feature film, Surf's Up. Coming on the tail end of the penguin mania that had swept our country in the mid-2000s, this mockumentary did pretty well for itself at the box office and was even nominated for the Oscar for Best Animated Feature. Then the property was left untouched for almost a decade, WWE picked up the scraps, and we were left with this. Surf's Up 2, Wave Mania. Wee! Okay, screw what I said last week. This is the biggest departure from wrestling for Animation Month. Wrestlers driving giant cars on a million dollar race is one thing, but here we have absolutely no mention of WWE. Instead, a handful of superstars basically play themselves, but as animals. Large, muscular, surfing animals I don't even know anymore. And let's take a look at who from the last movies come back for this long-awaited sequel. Nope. 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 <laughs> Definitely nope. Oh, John Heater and Diedrich Bader. The... Durr Boys. Our story begins with a brief recap of what happened in the last movie, when Cody Maverick sacrificed his chance at winning the big surfing competition to help his friend Chicken Joe. We see more of the mockumentary style presentation that was so dominant in the first movie, so thumbs up for continuity there. Cody is still living on Pengu Island, running a fledgling surf academy. To be the master of the ocean? Uh, come again? Well, I can show you how it's done at the Pengu Surf Academy! Well, it wouldn't be a WWE movie if they didn't try and shoehorn a commercial for something in there. Chicken Joe, who's become a world-famous surfer since the events of the last movie, makes a surprise trip to the island to visit his friends. Time off from your tour? Aren't you supposed to be in Madagascar right now? Nope, sorry, you're looking for DreamWorks. That's two lots over. Dig that wetsuit. Yeah? Thanks. It's a little tight around my nuggets and tenders. <laughs> Chicken Joe gives Cody a souvenir from his travels, a poster advertising a group of extreme surfers called the Hang Five, played by what the DVD cover tells me are my favorite WWE superstars. Kind of a stretch. We're introduced to the Hang Five during a flashback to Cody's youth, which, based on the hairdo of the Michael Cole Siegel, I'm guessing takes place around the year 2000. There's Hunter, Paige, The Undertaker, JC, and Mr. McMahon. Wait, we get an otter named Mr. McMahon, but we can't have a penguin named John Cena. We have a penguin named The Undertaker, but not one of John Cena. Do animals even understand the concept of titles? Or Undertakers? If you want some, come get some. Well, those people are clearly there to see them, so yeah, I'd say they want some. In a turn of events too coincidental even for this movie, The Hang Five shows up at Pengu Island as telegraphed by Michael Gull, who is in full 2011 heel mode here. You know what? Forget it! There used to be respect for showmanship in this business. It's even more compelling in CGI form. I like milk and fish, because I'm an otter, and otters like fish. I just wish you could milk a fish. It's a scary one. Yeah, 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 yeah! This one time, for like nine years, I stunted the careers of dozens of men by never losing a match! <laughs> Mr. McMahon reveals his plan for the team to ride the trenches, the most dangerous waves imaginable. He also says he'll be retiring after this final ride and that he hopes to find his replacement on Pengu Island. This despite having done seemingly no research as to who's on the island these days, as no one on the team's ever heard of Cody, his perennial rival Tank, or Lonnie, who by all accounts are the only adult penguins who exist on this island. Was Hang 5 just hopping from island to island until they found penguins to try and recruit? That's not very efficient. And besides, Mr. McMahon retiring? Get out of here. Cody thinks he's being picked for the team, but it turns out Lonnie's being considered for the spot instead. And because Cody is a little baby who spends the bulk of the movie being jealous of other success, he shows off his skills to the team to prove his worth. JC is impressed and wants to bring him along on the team's quest, while Hunter recruits Tank, and The Undertaker wants to bring Chicken Joe. In case I get hungry. Oh, for crying out loud! Fine. 
You can keep your rookies. Rookies? Wait a minute, what's happening here? Ugh. In a completely irrelevant and unimportant aside, Paige elaborates that she's a diva and she wants to create a spin-off show about all of her fellow diva friends. Imagine me and like 11 of my besties traveling the world and kicking butt. Sure, let's cram a not-so-subtle advertisement for a reality show into this children's movie. And by the way, what kind of quality stuff from Paige will our young viewers be able to see if they watch that show? You're a piece of You are a piece of What if did you go up to Corona and tell him about my freaking neck? The group makes their way to Slaughter Island, home of the trenches. Come on, that's no Slaughter Island. Look how small that chin is. McMahon leads the group of animals to the island to get to the trenches, with the assistance of a conch shell that seems to speak to him like a cell phone. The conch says... There's no reception in here. Ah, let me see if I can get any bars. I don't get it. Is this a rib? Like, is Vince on his phone all the time or something? The group races down some sand dunes on the bet, but Tank sabotages Cody. After he rubs it in Cody's face, JC takes notice. That Tank guy is ridiculous. He's like a cartoon villain. I is he self-aware now? The gang plays a fun little game of cross the giant chasm on a tightrope and don't die when the vine breaks and sends everyone off the cliff anyway. They all manage to survive, but get separated as they fall into different parts of a giant temple. This isn't a tomb, it's, it's a server's hall of fame! In the treasure room, Tank sets off a booby trap that results in the entire temple collapsing as everyone makes a break for it. Oh, Huh, that's gonna be a fine. A fight between Cody and Tank leads to some wrestling between Hunter and JC. Well, hang on, did JC just whip the fist drop? We'll never get to the trenches if you keep starting fights with your teammates. <laughs> Boy, this movie likes to use unguarded chair shots to the head as a comedic device. Like, more than you'd think. In a scene that was obviously included for the video game adaptation that never came, the team hang glides over a river of lava. Cody's thirst to beat Tank nearly gets Chicken Joe killed. After getting chewed out by everyone, Cody decides he doesn't belong in the Hang 5 after all and leaves the group in the dead of night. Well, kinda killed the moment there, man. As Cody realizes that his friends are in great danger, the rest of the group finally arrives at the trenches. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Tank is the only one who decides to ride the giant wave with the Hang 5, but immediately has second thoughts. He's then shoved off the wave by the group, presumably to his death, mere minutes after they just lectured Cody about the importance of working as a team. The good guys, everyone! The Undertaker is hit by lightning, ironically. Hunter goes back to save him, and the rest of the team has to bail. As Lonnie works to save Taker's life, Cody arrives on the scene and rushes to save Tank. Just before the two are murdered to death by some jagged coral reef, JC lives up to his initials and saves them. Lonnie and Chicken Joe revive the Undertaker, though they really could have just waited a bit longer he probably would have sat up on his own. For his bravery, Mr. McMahon offers Cody a spot in the team, but our hero declines for generic good guy reasons. But now I know I'm already part of a great team with the coolest chicken of the sea, and the best, raddest surfer on Pengu. McMahon decides he's staying in the group after all, making this entire endeavor kind of pointless. Cody goes back to Pengu Island to shill his failing surf school. We get a lovely PG crotch chop from Hunter, fade to black. And that was Surf's Up 2 Wave Mania. Whew. Four movies down, one to go. Folks, this has been an emotional roller coaster of a month for me. I've seen some good movies, I've seen some bad movies, but this one has to be the most boring thing I've seen all month. First, let's just address the fact that visually, this movie can't hold a candle to its predecessor from nearly 10 years earlier, though I guess it's to be expected for a straight-to-DVD movie. Also, this is undoubtedly the most bizarre crossover I've ever seen, much less for the purpose of Animation Month. At least Scooby-Doo and the Flintstones are popular symbols in the history of American pop culture, so it would make sense for WWE to insert themselves into that mess. But a film universe revolving around surfing penguins seems like an odd entry point for a pro wrestling company. Throw in an insufferable hero, a bland supporting cast, a team of guest stars that could have been played by literally anyone else with little to no change in the script, and a story that results in almost no character development or growth, and you have what I consider the worst entry thus far in Animation Month. Oh yeah, one more thing. <laughs> well folks, we're not quite done yet because this Thursday is the final installment of Animation Month. We're going back to 2D and ahead to the future to review the Jetsons and WWE Robo WrestleMania. Be sure to thumbs up this video if you like it, comment below, subscribe to Wrestling With Regret, and buy the t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.